Darlene, just start by saying your name and, and where we are. Darlene Marcus, Glenwood Green Acres at 18th and Glenwood in North Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. This is Viry Ricketts Thomas from, I'm in Overbrook. I farmed out here at North Philly. We are at 1801 West Glenwood Avenue at the great Glenwood Green Acres. <laughs> so how, how many acres is this? Darlene. This is like three and a half acres of land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just about four. Mm -hmm. And what's going on here today? Today is a quiet day. Not many gardeners out there. There's one gardener, he's tilling a garden trying to get it ready. He told me he was out in the rain yesterday and did his own. So I think he's doing another gardener's garden for them. And um, just a quiet morning so far. And what do we see coming up? Okay, this is our city harvest garden, which I said two weeks ago we planted this garden. And we were supposed to have volunteers that day, but it was raining, so they weren't able to come. So those of us that were out here just planted the whole garden so that we could take care of our own. It's kind of hard managing this and managing your own. And what, is, uh, what does City Harvest Garden mean? What is that? It's a program run through help me out here. VHS and oh, NGT. That provides food, vegetables for neighborhood cupboards where people that are not um, able to get have access to fresh vegetables and things. We whatever we grow here, we would donate to them, mm -hmm. and this is run by the PHS and, and the Neighborhood Garden mm -hmm. Trust. Yes. So, and our food cupboard is Grands as Parents. It's a group that our grandparents that for some reason or another now raising their grandchildren. So we give them fresh vegetables as they grow. This year I thought we might do a little something different. I was thinking I was gonna let them come and help tend to the garden a little bit, because it's a lot of work. As you see, this each of these, it's, this is one large garden we've divided into four sections so we can see the different things that we put down. These are string beans that come up. This is two weeks worth and it came up very good. Very good. Of this garden. Last week. Well, we have to make tell you that the, the vegetables are donated from the City Harvest Association of um, Neighborhood Gardens Trust. They give us the seedlings and we plant them and give back to them. That's the way that we give back to the city and how they help us. We help them. Yes. Yeah, so, right here we have um, squash and cucumbers, and we have string beans, we have chives, we have dill, there are tomatoes, lettuce, we have leek, onions, and over here there are eggplants and peppers. Kale. kale, three different types of kale, cabbage, and colored greens. And uh, basil. basil. And basil, sweet potatoes, and uh, white potato of all kinds, the red, the pink, the yukon gold, the purple potato. We have lots of different types of potato. Well, thank God for NGT. This is how we get all of this stuff. So it's in here. And we're able to give to the food cupboard. They'll get a variety of yeah. everything. It's so. amazing. I had no idea. How long have you, well, uh, actually, that's a longer story, but How does the... Well, he's going to be making noise, so we probably can... Yeah, yeah. Okay. He's coming down here. Oh. He's going to do that garden. Okay. So we can so we walk can to the back. Okay. We go straight up. North Philly train station. One stop up, one yes, stop right up. up the street. Yeah. So if you ride by, you see the orange wall, you know this is us. Oh, yeah. Now this is what he just turned over so this person can come right in and start planting. He just filled it all over. I hear birds. Yeah. We have a lot of robins. The robin population is big. That's the only one I can identify. Um, and they tell me it's a couple different. I know the robins. I'm not a bird person, but I know a robin. When I see them, for some reason, they're drawn to out here. They have nests in some of the trees and stuff. We often see eggs in the nesting trees. Wow. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Um, Darlene, I brought your peppers. <coughs> you know, maybe we could do, I didn't bring my other recorder, but this is a, well, I just, I, I don't know about the noise. See, the thing is, what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, you know, when I get back to my studio with everything, is editing, and, and when there's <coughs> background noise, it's a little harder to edit stuff. Right, yeah. But let's it's just start here and see where we get. You know, I have a couple of articles in, in, in the paper from 98, where um, the observer came and interviewed Darlene, myself, and Eileen. And it's all written up there of the, all the things they're doing. Hi, Vinny. That's another gardener. This is Barbara. She's doing a history on our garden. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and um, nice to meet you. I, I brought them out with me. And Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor, who is actually the one of the founders started that started all of this. I have him out there also, the picture and some of the things that he said. So we could do a reading and... Um, that would be in there. Well, I'd rather hear your voices, you know, right. live, if well, you know no, what I mean. It might be a little quieter. We can, we can, you can, so you can see, we can walk up this end as well. Okay. You have your sneaks yeah, on, I'm and fine. we're getting them messed up already, because today no, no. is a wet day. It doesn't been matter. Soppy, That's soppy. fine. Over the past couple of days, the train does come back and forth now. Yeah. We have our nice garden. One gardener told me, he said, these are the farmers up that end, and these are the gardeners down here, because it's not a competition, but... They do you see the difference in the farming. In the end, it all looks the same, but more retired people, I think, of this end. The working ones are down this end, so we don't get to it. I'm one of them. We don't get to it as much. This is somebody that was sick over the winter. Sometimes we try to hold the gardens for people who are sick and see if they're able to come out before we can get them. Like I said, you have to come back again because it's not as manicured as I would like it, but it's just been rain over the past two weeks. We're coming to Palm Vise Garden. You can see that. These are cactus that put off a pretty yellow flower. Mm -hmm. It looks like plastic when you get it. Now it's been raining, so everything else is going, but she has potatoes, but you can tell her what you have. Cabbage yeah, look like. Um, this, this is, is yours, this is, Yeah, this is one of mine. I have two. So right along the edge, you see the, the rays that is there? It's all potatoes all the way around. It comes back to up here. I put them out like about three weeks ago. And the potatoes are that type of vegetable that started in the cool. April would be your best month to put out potatoes and you'll get a better growth from them. But I weren't able to, April was kind of cold and wet, so I weren't able to do that. So the first chance I got in April, in May, that's when I, I put them out. I really, I like to garden. I love... The one on the end, the second one. Um, I love gardening. I actually got involved in... Well, I am from Jamaica. So that's where it all comes. But strangely, when I was there, all I did was flowers. I had a flower garden of my own, and that's what I did. And my parents do cultivating. But now that I came here, I started to grow things and I got involved with the flower show so the flower show brought me to Glenwood because I went to the show found this beautiful postcard and came back and I was talking with Darlene we used to work at the same hospital and I was all excited and I ran over to her I said look what I found what this beautiful garden and she just casually looked at me and said that's our garden North Philly so we started talking and then she said, well, come on out and meet Mr. Taylor. And he likes to talk to people that know what they're doing. And I came out, spoke with Mr. Taylor, and he was satisfied with what I said. So I got this plot and that's where we started. I think it's from 99, from 98 or now it's before that, 90, 92, 92, 93. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Our garden is on the plate. Is like I think it's about 37 or 38 years old now. 1983. When it first started, it was a factory here. It set for years and years because I grew up around here, and as a child, I remember the factory. I remember it being gone, so it laid dormant for lots and lots of years. And Mr. Taylor lived across the street in the yellow house, and him and his wife were kind of tired of seeing it, so they got a group of friends and went down to City Hall and got permits to be over here. And that was before they became involved with PHS, then not long after they got involved with PHS to help them out some out here. 
back in the day there, they had little houses that they made of their own. They plotted out all of these things, the older ones. My grandfather was one of them that started out with him. So I can't even remember what year my grandfather died. It was so year ago. But he started getting sick. He came down with cancer, and he couldn't get out to the garden, but he didn't want to give it up. My brothers wouldn't come around, so he sent me around here to kind of see what was going on. So I got to meet Mr. Taylor, Mr. Hyten, some of the older gentlemen that used to be in here, and they started showing me what to do. So I had to take the vegetables home when they were harvested and let him see and approve and bring it back and back and forth and let him tell me how to garden from the bed. And every once in a while, we put him in a wheelchair and bring him around. But he used to stay around here from sunup to sundown. It's a real calming place when you're in here because everybody we bring around to see, after a little while, they want to stay. I have friends. I'm always asking for help. Nobody wants to put their hands in the dirt. But when I finally get them around here, two of my girlfriend's husbands in particular, they don't want to go. Once they get here and start, I said, see, you don't want to get your hands dirty, but see? And it's a nice calming effect. Yes, it is. And you live close by? I live a couple blocks away, yeah, so I can zip right around. So, so, how, uh, so this is part of your growing up, kind of. I mean, how old were you when you first got involved with Mr. Thomas over here? Uh, Mr. Taylor. Uh, Mr. Taylor. Taylor. Um, oh my God. Mm, I don't even know. That's over 30 years ago. I guess maybe in my 20s or 30s, early 30s or so, because... No, no, no. no. You wasn't 30 yet. <laughs> no, she was in your 20s when you found Mr. Taylor. Down and do the math. Because so my daughter was already born and she was up and walking and talking, so she's about five. 76. Hmm. Early age. <laughs> and, and why? What did Mr. Taylor, what was it about him that got you involved? What, or, or the project? Why did you get involved? You were busy, you were working. Mm -hmm. The story I just told you, someone had to come around and take care of my grandfather's garden. And then after you get around here, you start to like it and, and doing things. But I really didn't have much of a choice in the matter because my brothers wouldn't come. So I was sent here on a mission to take care of his garden because he couldn't. And he wasn't going to give it up because he's one of the people that helped start it. He was like the carpenter of the bunch. Him and a man across the street, Mr. Height, built up a lot of houses and things around here. They all, they, they composed the garden spots, actually, because these have been here for the 37 years or so that they've been here. What was your and grandfather's name? Philip Turner. And um, like I say, he and Mr. Taylor were friends, and I don't even know from where, why, or how he got involved in it. But I know with some time, he was around here at least five or six years before he got sick with it. And, and like I said, it was just hobby I guess recreation he's retired old man at home something to do to keep coming around because I remember my grandmother sending us around go get him at Tom come home because he come like dark in the morning it's late at night tell him come home and get dinner <laughs> so he'd have a beach chair and sit out here he'd go to sleep he was all day long this was his new job <clears throat> in the place where he said but it, it, it's common because most of our gardeners now are senior citizens and um we're trying to recruit some younger people to get involved, but they have a lot of old stories to tell and, and from their farm and back down south and different things. So everybody has a way of telling you something, a different technique and how to do things, and it works. So I, I'm trying to understand about this, the city garden and your garden. You, it, so the city garden is something that you do for other people, for PHS? The City Harvest is just a program that we're in through PHS. So you're donating your time for City Harvest, but you're not getting the harvest, is that, that right? That particular garden is for them. The rest of the gardens are our own, like individual gardens. City Harvest is um, through PHS and um, the Neighborhood Garden Trust. That's how come we have this garden. Actually, the Neighborhood Garden Trust, which used to be Neighborhood Gardens Association, and they changed it to Neighborhood Garden Trust. So they actually owned this property. After the factory burnt down... They didn't own it for several years, for, though. They yeah. didn't own it for about 10 years or more of the garden's existence. Then they went to auction, because it was a supermarket up the street, and they were all bidding for the land, because this would have been path mark had they not got it. But they ended up beating them at auction and got the land. So after it all burned down and Mr. Taylor found Terry Mishovic, I think her last name is. And she wasn't even the first person, it was Elaine. No, so she, she, they start talking and 
Tyree and the people from um, NGT got involved and start, and then they found out how they could go with the city and purchase this property. So they purchased this property, so now it's secured. As long as we can cultivate it and keep it going, this is a secured property, it will not be sold to a developer and nothing else will come here other than gardens. So that's how we own this. And it really is, even in spite of the train going by and the cars and trucks, it, it, you feel the peace. There really is a peace. It, it reminds me of a park. It's like a big park because you, you can do exercise. People talk about exercise. I've run around this garden enough. That's exercise in itself. Because, like I said, you'll see as we walk around, there are trees down there. We have a hillside that they're going to renovate within the next year or so. And... If you go across the bridge here, there is a little park here. I believe this garden is bigger than the little park that's over there. It's more space. And a uh, lot to keep up. Lots of work, that's for sure. How many, how many plots are here? Well, I always say 96, because that was my last count. But I said it might have gone up to 100 and something. I'm about 102 right now. Because in the beginning, when Mr. Taylor and Mr. Turner when they start cutting it up, they cut it up in, as you see, 30 and 40 feet by 15 or 20. So these plots are huge. And some of the men had double plots. So some people has deceased and we changed those plots into two. So when we had 98, that were the double plots and a couple of them left. So we add the other four, we add two. That's how come we have about 98 plots here. And right now we have about 60 gardeners or 68 gardeners, because, but some people do have two plots. And uh, that's our disturbance right now. <laughs> and uh, the, the people, the gardeners are allowed to have two, not more than two plots. So, you know, because everybody start when you start planting, you just get you want to plant more and more and more. So for that reason, you have to curve it. Because even myself, when I start planting, everything that I think would grow, I would put in the ground. And it grows, even though sometimes I don't get anything from it because the season is not long enough for it. But I love to watch it grow. And this, this garden is therapeutic. We relax, we talk, we admire each other. We reminisce and the old people it, just love to come out and do what they can do a little bit at a time but it re energize them so it's beautiful it's really good we have a mixture of people a mixture of cultures like we can look over here this is Gail this is our Korean couple and their garden is they are out here in the winter and the spring early spring and uh, she and her husband how we have weeds they one year took and sifted all the dirt, got all the weeds out of this and their plot over there and they have another plot down here. And um, beautiful garden. And they, they work hard in it. And like I said, don't get near weed because they sifted and she can get down on her knees, something I can't even do no more. <laughs> and come back up and they have a great garden. When it gets to growing, they have this trellis built over there. She had um, squash, I think it was last year, zucchini or something, hanging yeah, off of it that drinks yeah. huge. And that's why I said you'll have to come back when we're in full bloom and really see how some of the gardens turn out. I we like have uh, we peach would... trees about. And another month or so, but the July, early July, things will be up and about. People are just basically a lot getting started because like I said, April was cold, it's been rainy, so you haven't had a chance. Like we usually have the grass manicured pretty well, but over the past week, it's just been rainy, can't get out here. Uh, Brian, he called me last night, he told me he did his garden yesterday over here in the rain. He just needed to get started, so he's out here early. But the ground is so dry, sometime after heavy rain, it soaks right in. Because this doesn't even look wet. And sometimes you dig down and it's dry under the bottom. But it was a heavy soaking rain yeah, all day yesterday. But these plants by July, oh, they'll be halfway ready. <coughs> or probably ready. They have uh, lettuce, lots of peppers. She, she do a lot with peppers. Mm -hmm. she, every hot year pepper. she had lots of hot, hot peppers. peppers. She grow a lot of hot peppers. Plus she has some Asian squash. Those are the ones that are huge. They're long. It's, it, 
it looks like um, butternut, but the texture of it is a little different. It's just beautiful. She used it for soup, she said. Makes squash. A lot of things she'll say is medicine. Be careful because there's a lot of rocks. This is, um, I mean, you tell me, I was going to say, you smell. Oh, nice, nice. Spearmint is scratch. <clears throat> Some people make it tea out of it, and that's like a weed. It kind of grows all over the place, but it's for the open. Anybody want to come, they can come and Actually, pull some up and grow really it or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, you you could make it for tea. You could put it in your lemonade or drinks. You could put it on your lamb when you're cooking, just like how you use ba basil. You could use mint, mint and thyme, the, and they don't die. And did you know vegetables? What do you see? Do I know vegetables? Uh -huh, I was oh. gonna say, what is this one? Oh, uh, oh, let's see. He's um, overgrown, but he should look familiar. Look it, at him right here. Is it chive? No. Asparagus. Asparagus. See, if we were out here to catch it, now this one, he's overgrown. If we yes. were here to catch it, we would have before he got this big, we would have made him caught him at where you could wow. eat it. Oh, but this is an asparagus with oh, yeah. lots of seeds that'll drop down and onions and a lot of weed, but onions, but before it's over, we'll weed all of this out. Everybody go will gloves, go back. I, here. I, could just I have some at the table. I have some if you have to go all the way to the car, some right on the table. I just keep my gloves, try to keep my gloves and sneakers in my trunk because just like with the trash, I had to go back and get my gloves. You always need a glove. I just bought a five pack yesterday when I was out because you just, I just keep them in the pockets. I've learned that from the older guys too. They always walk around with gloves in their pockets and saws and I was wondering why. Because there's always a tree stem, a weed, or something all the time. So I said, Lord, they have me keeping tools in the trunk so they're easily accessible. Because we have cabinets, but then you got to unlock them and go in and get things. So sneakers, a glove, and a, a, a hose. I have a little small hand hose you, you do. Because sometimes, like she said, when you're standing in front of a weed, you have that urge to want to come pick them out. And she's going to get gloves, so while we're talking, she can be picking out the weeds from around the onions that are here. The onions are probably... Just about ready. She planted these in the fall. And now that the ground is wet, it comes up very easy. Like, you take about a half hour, wop, 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 we whip this up in no yeah. time, pulling out all the weeds and things. You know what these are, though? These are garlic. This is garlic? Yes. This no, is garlic. No, no, this is garlic. I put them out in no, November. Flat. The onion would have been round. Round, yes. Garlic you put out from November to January. Okay. That's when you put them out and then they grow. And see, they're ripening now, so it's almost time to harvest garlic. So I like to wait until the leaves are almost dry, then you take them up. That's what this garlic is. And over there, cultural chayote. We grow that in Jamaica and it's, it's in the squash family. Uh -huh. It has a texture a little bit like um, cucumber it's a little firmer than cucumber you could um, steam it and eat it or you could eat it raw or you could put it in your salad I like it in a salad because it gives you that crunch that um, more so than the um, the cucumbers so last year I planted it that, that, that would be the fourth year that I plant and it never beer but last year it's the trellises, it take over all the trellises, and I looked under there, and there were all these children. I start screaming. I do that every year. As long as I've been gardening, every year when I plant something and it comes out, I scream. And when it first fruit comes out, I scream. And when I picked it, I screamed again. It's just, I guess, how can I explain this? It's I'm happy or. <laughs> Or the miracle of planting and growing and bearing. That's that's what it is. I just love it. I love it. I really enjoy doing it. And I, I can't thank um, the AGT and PHS enough for this property. And Darlene and Mr. Taylor for letting me in. That is um, Amarella, so yes, don't take her up. I put it, do you remember the ones we got from the flower show? I put it down, yes, and the ones in the pot, they all died, but that one lived and, and it's blossoming, so we're going to keep her.
So you were telling me a lot of stories about like the Korean family and and the men who carry things around. How do you um, do you ever get together in groups, or is it just when you're gardening? How do you learn from one another? Well, um, usually, like if I'm out early, most people garden early in the morning. There's always someone here. We have a meeting once a month, the second Tuesday of every month, six o'clock, where everybody comes together. We have uh, different functions. Say, for instance, our meeting for June is going to be a chat and chew. So more so, we'll talk a little business, but mainly it'll be everybody to get to know your neighbor because we have a few newcomers that are coming in so they can get to see the faces because the gate is on guard. If you don't know them, they can't come in. So when you're meeting together, you get to know the face and who's in the garden next to you. And, and pretty much the old, the people that have been here, we all know who is who. But there are some newcomers that they need to see and we'll get to know. And it just that's the time to socialize. But usually, if it hadn't been raining, it's usually a lot of people out here. At any given point during the day, there's a group that comes. So you'll either see them in the evening or you'll see them in the morning. And um, it's time, they're out here. Yeah. You share, because if somebody like the old, like Mr. Taylor, say Mr. Taylor, Mr. Turner, uh, Mel walk by and I'm planting something and that's not how they do it. They would share their ideas. Okay. Oh, that is not how you do Mr. Taylor was great for that. Oh, why? That is not how you do it. He could never pronounce the V. So he said, why? So he said, why? That is not how you do it, girl. Do it like this, and that's how we learn from each other. You know, the older ones, not so much older in age, but older gardeners, share their ideas and tell you how to do things. What that you throw away? Oh, my garlic, see? See, I don't let amateur gardeners in my garden, see? <laughs> because they pull up my stuff and then I have to scream at my friends, you know? That is not I right. Was at me and her husband because <laughs> we just pull the weeds and keep it moving. <laughs> yes, so I have to scream at them at all times of how to do that. And Brian too, he has some good ideas when you're planting and if he has something different, he would share. So here is such and such a thing that I just found and he'll give you one and we would share our plants, exchange, you know? And we get a different. Okay. This tree, my husband cut it back last year. Cut it all the way back, and he came up beautiful this year. What is that? Honeysuckle. <coughs> Honeysuckle. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love the smell. Oh, no. We used to go in the park and pull them off, and I don't know. We used to put them in our mouth as a child. I remember that part. I remember that too. too yeah. But um, but I won't know, touch I this. So I don't know about it. Though. When it first came out, it looks to me like they were red currants, but they weren't. They're honeysuckle. Then one thing I notice about this, it bears. Soon after this, the whole tree is going to be red, and the birds just come in, but they do not eat them. The nope. Birds won't eat them, will we? <laughs> the birds won't eat them, but when you, if you touch the tree. You have a flock of birds. They just go. I think they love the shelter. I don't I know why. And they probably have nests all in there. Last Maybe. year, when it was cut back, but it, it's really grown. It, it's a nice shaded area for this time. Over here, we have um, the back part of the tree. Oh, I'm going to remember this now when I come These on the train. Chestnut see. trees that Gail mm -hmm. and her husband. Our Korean couple that put down. Mm -hmm. the she says she right had two. Is the chestnut? Oh, it's the curvy. Yeah. Oh, is this peach? Oh, okay, these are apples. Okay. No, no, no. This one is a plum. You see, I just came here the other day and I said there is no plum. Oh, look, look, look! There's a bunch of plums. Right. Oh, did you see that? Yes. <laughs> I told you I'm crazy. There's a bunch of them. Look at that. Yes. <laughs> and um, and here's one. And this is some type of a, a um, this is a um, pear. Isn't this a pear? Yes. That is the red, the little red pear. It has a name, but I can't think of Oh, there's another one. Yes. And that one's getting red. Yes, that's the red pear. It has a name. I think of it later. I'm getting into that senior age now. Over here, like you say, they planted this a couple years ago, and he is huge now. It yes. took it a couple years, it seemed like, to really shoot out, I think but this is their chestnut tree. It, Let it them. Last year. It did bear, the chestnut. 
and I pick a couple of them, but they were small. That's when you open it, it here. You can see in that one vine sticking yes. to the sun, yeah, you can see you it. see, there is a couple mm. of them up there. Oh, and look at that branch there. Yes, it's bearing she planted too. This is from the Korean lady. Whenever oh, she yeah, goes. Well, you know what, because they moved over. I knew it started with two chestnuts. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, but, <laughs> but I thought it would grow into a taller tree. I didn't think it would spread it's like this. It's growing wide, but, but it is wide. We'll let them take care of it. Yeah. A couple years ago, they planted a field over here of flowers, yeah, but yeah. it took off a little, but not really. We have a lot of resident groundhogs that live back here and across the land back there. And it's supposed to be a real colorful thing, but kind of undecided if we'll keep it or not because it's kind of getting a little too tall. In the beginning of the season, we thought we were going to have volunteers and able to cut it all the way down. So just in the past two weeks, this has really grown up like it's getting a little away from us. We really do have to work on this area here. Well, in here they have the, um, some of the flowers came back. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a peach tree right there. I think she just grow there on yeah. her own. You'll find peach trees all, all over the, the garden because the seeds are around. We won't allow people to have them in the gardens there because you have to be able to see. But when you walk around, you'll see them almost in every garden. You have this, to take them the up though. The meadow was beautiful. When the first, we, the year. first and second year, it was great. But if you don't cut it early spring, it get out of control. And we did not cut it early spring. So you see a few of the flowers are still fighting their way through it, but it needs some care right now. It needs to be cut down and good. Another good thing about it out here, it doesn't matter how hot it is. And you come here and sit under that tree, it's like it's air conditioned. I can't, I can't explain why, but it is so cool. It's always cool. Right now. It's, yes, it is. But when we are in the sun and you need a reprieve, you just come under the shed and it's that's over. A, that's a nice idea. Yes. Now, when did that happen, the shed? This was, <clears throat> Mr. Taylor was living here, so it's many, many years old. Years and stuff, I, I have the dates written down. I'll have to put out the literature for dates and years and stuff, but it's 10 years and maybe more. Oh, it's way more than 10 years because when I came, it was there. And I came here in 92, 93, and it was there. That's when Terry, the and, and um, Lane at first. Neighborhood Association yeah, people, yeah. they helped with putting it up. They actually put it up for us. Yeah. They, they help with a lot of things. They are very good to in restoring the, Along with some of the Congress people in the area, because Daryl Clark was involved in that too. Yeah. So they they went to them, I guess, on our behalf and both chipped in. We had lights at one point too, but through the area and stuff, the kids came over and kind of broke them up. And so we cut the electric off and let that kind of go for back here. But What is the Neighborhood Association, Darlene? What's it called? In this area? Yeah. Each section has their own. See, like where I'm at, it would be the Woodstock Association, but this sits in the middle of a whole lot now. I'm not from this immediate area, so I don't know what they call it, but Shirley Kitchen used to have an office over there. But she was though the congressperson and everything, so I don't know. She was involved in the area and the neighborhood, but since I'm not from directly around here, I am not sure of that. What is this neighborhood called? This is North Philadelphia, North Central because, Philadelphia. Um, I can't think of the name. Is that Susquehanna? Susquehanna is more on the other side of where I live at, oh, is the okay. Susquehanna area. So that's why I said each section kind of has its name. Just take a walk and talk. Yeah. Because it's, oh, I'm going to take you that way too. Outside. I want you to see the whole thing yeah, yeah. before you have to go. It's yeah. nice. But yeah, I don't know the exacts. Because like I say, everything is cut off in the sections, and each section has its own association. Mm -hmm. Now where I'm at, I'm more in the Susquehanna part mm -hmm. and the one on the corner of our block is called the Woodstock Association and that's for the like 10 blocks around there. But when you cross over Glenwood to a certain point then it turns to something else. What's the story with this? There's another gardener. He works really hard on his. He's out here. Me and him were out here. The only ones out in the rain the other day. I had some plants at home and it, I couldn't get out to get them down. I had to come in the rain and so my friend Jadette, if I'm out here and you don't hear from me, call the police. But when I came out, this gardener was here, so I was happy. He hung around for a little while while I planted my stuff. 
and these are beans that had popped up from him from last year. He moved them and put them in the line so they would grow. I have a few of my garden that just popped up. I'm going to have to do the same thing. You just move them over and put them in a the line. You know, I hear you both talk a lot about food and recipes. Does that become part of the experience here? I'm the grower. She's the cook. <laughs> well, we here, wait, 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 wait till yeah, I get to you, by. When we have like our chat and chew at a meeting, we just do ordinary things like probably hamburger and hot dogs and stuff. But then twice a year, we had a really good cookout. June 16th is Community's Garden Day in Philadelphia. So we're gonna celebrate Community's Garden Day here. Um, downtown, I think they're going to have speeches and all that stuff. But because I have to stay or we have to be in our garden, we can't join them. So Community's Garden Day, we're going to have a big shindling. We'll cook fish and chicken and probably some jerk pork. And jerk pork is a um, Caribbean thing. <laughs> so we'll have that and um, different types of food, rice and peas and mac and cheese and all kind of drinks and stuff. So we just sit, talk. Mostly that day is not a lot of garden work. It's a more social gathering. So we sit and talk, share stories about the old people that was here and what the difference is between now and then. And we just eat and have a good time. And we do come it. Out. Yes, and we invite people to, to come out. And people come in from other neighborhood or other gardens to come in and look at how our garden is being kept and have a lot of questions and we have somebody that can answer those questions to go around with them and stuff. So and it's not in just our garden as well. All the gardens in the city are having it. So it yeah. may be a garden in your area that's having it as well. Yeah, you know, I'm not so aware. You're making me more aware that there probably is one, but not like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so June sixteen is that day. And in September, when the end of the season is coming, we have like a crop over when the season is done. So we have a big celebration where all the gardeners come together and we have another feast. Yeah. And that's our main event. The other one is good, but that's new. The end of the season one we do every year and have been for years. And like I said, more people, I'm hoping, every year we hope on June 21st more and more will come. But also when we were meeting about it at THS, we couldn't have a chance to visit each other's gardens because it started early in the morning and everybody has to stay in their own. So I think they're starting a little later this time. Yeah. Um, so that if you want to visit really. Oh, that's I not think 10.30 or 11 o'clock oh, they're know. starting. Two, no, 10.30 no, to 2. No, and then it's over. <coughs> but it's not over here till the last one goes home. So. <laughs> and what about the fall one? You said that's the bigger one. That's our end of the season where we try to encourage all the gardeners to come out. And we don't even have to because everybody's ready for a nice cookout. And we plan it throughout the season so everybody knows what's coming up and what they need to bring. And... We usually start early in the morning. When Mr. Taylor and them were here, we haven't done this yet. They used to spend the night in here and roast a big, a whole, they'd go somewhere and get a whole pig, and a group of them would sit out all night long and roast him in this big grill that's back there. We don't even use it anymore. And that was their main event. So we kind of carry it on. We, we haven't done that in a minute, though. But it's a good time. We have music, and everybody's laughing and talking and having a good time. And then, you know, the season is closed. And you can walk around and look at your gardens. A lot of time people bring stuff that they've made from the vegetables in the garden and things. So it, it turns out pretty good. It's a pretty nice affair. And that's the time, like you said, when we all get together and communicate and go over how you did this throughout the summer and stuff. So it's a fun thing to do. There's a peach tree. Tell me, peaches are all over. Yeah, that's beautiful. Wow. Oh my gosh. I have to actually get some tree tenders because here lately, there's something coming out. As soon as they come out, the leaves are shriveling. We're not a lot of tree people here. I'm vegetables. Vi does vegetables and plants. That's why when you say about a plant, I point to her because I know a vegetable from an embryo. I don't know nothing about flowers. <laughs> no trees. So we're trying to get tree tenders to come out and maybe they can look and see what's going on with the trees. Mm -hmm. Up this end. Oh, and here's like mushrooms that grow all over the place. Oh, yeah. oh these are not the good mm -hmm. ones. <laughs> They're all over. They just pop up. And here's our beautiful iris. Oh. 
That's beautiful. Yeah, so like I said, when you come back again, we'll be more manicured and the old grass will be down. Um, a lot of nice gardens up here keep beautiful gardens and stuff. See, the grass up here was recently cut, but it started raining and stuff, so they didn't get down to our end. But I'm going to walk you up the good and the bad. <laughs> we have compost bins on each end of the garden for people to put their compost in. And this is stuff that people put in last year. It breaks down and turns back into dirt. So if they want, they can put it back into the gardens. But this is a nice compost bin. It goes in like that in the fall and over the winter and everything. Somehow it turns back into dirt. When they say ashes to ashes, it turns back. <laughs> and it's amazing Take seeing it how it does it. And it's the most richest soil because it's of the vegetables and things, but just incredible to me how it turns back into dirt. Because like you say, it goes in weeds like that. And see how it's starting to break down and start to look like dirt. And then in the end, I don't know. And, and throughout the summer, stuff grows. Because look here, these are, oh, it might not. No, I think it is. Somebody has something with beans in it. So yeah. these are some type of bean. I think now, they're like either black-eyed peas or crowder peas. Since this is up this end, I'll give them a little bit of time, but if they don't do it, I will take them up and put them in my garden. But since it's up this end, I'll let the people up this end at it first. Yes. But somebody will probably see and come in here. They, they can make a good row, all the beans that have come up in here. And this is just from them throwing it in over the winter. But boy, they're all over the place. They can make a nice row of beans here. And often when we look at our compost bins, you have squash growing in there, beans. You'll see it after a little while it starts to grow. But wow, Mel must not have seen that. Mel is a... Uh, one of our captains up this end. He's our big help. And when he sees them, he can make a whole row. Oh, so what, tell me about the captains. How does that, what's that all about? Well, the garden is divided into three areas because it's just too much for both of us to handle and everybody always has a problem or concern. Like at the end of each meeting, I'll say, are there any problems or concern? People can't wait to tell you. Now, they'll call me more than, they'll call me, but I think they may call via middle. I don't put my phone number out there as much as she does because my nerves after a little while so we can set they'll always it's always some problem or concern no matter what it's something so the captain's job is just as ours if something is going on they can tell them if they can solve it on the spot they will if it's something big or major you know they'll run it by and then we'll all meet about it and figure out how we're going to solve it and get back to them but pretty much so they're we have one for this end, Mel, and one for that end, Lewis, but they can both cross over, whichever. And that's so it's always a person maybe out here at some point, because if they can't see one of us, they'll see one of them. So everybody knows who the go-to people are. So like I said, it's so huge out here. And then we have Jeanette. She's kind of a middle person. So if, like I say, people have concerns at every meeting, I make sure everybody knows who all the faces are. So if they see somebody, they can tell you what they want and we'll tell them, you know, we'll get back to you on, depending on what the problem is. If they can solve it, they will. Most of the time, Mel and Lewis, they, they will solve the problem right away or whatever and tell me what it was in the end and this is what I did about it. So it's just, so this is just too big and everybody can't be out here 24 seven to know what's going on and how to solve it. And they're just little things from somebody was in my garden picking to, uh, is the water coming on or, why don't we have a light or, you know, it's different little things, nothing really major. Sometimes it was a dog that was coming in here, it was becoming a problem in the morning. Somebody's walking his dog, but he let him somehow in the garden. So the gardeners are coming out. And it was one gardener, as soon as I got out here, he couldn't wait to tell me, but he was all flesh. He said he was bending down and he felt something on his back. Pop. The dog was on his back. He said, darling. I almost peed my pants. <laughs> he said, I turned around and he got down. Now, me and him looking at each other. So he said, he started walking slowly over to the fence. So he opened up the gate, but this was a friendly dog. When he opened up, the dog went out and he locked him in. He said, I had to come back here and sweat because this can't be after death. So it's little things like that that people need to know so we can make people aware. Always look at your surroundings it so you can know. It sounds like people really see you two as the ones that are really in charge. I mean, is that because you've been here longer? You know more? You're more involved? What, what's that about? We actually have a committee. So, uh, like I said, it's, it's four basic ones of us, because even though I tell them captains, they're just as we are, because we all take care of all the problems. It's just 
too big a place and too many people. So. Darlene is the president. I, I'm the secretary treasurer. So they hear us, they see us, and they know who we are. So I can't even explain why so much people have my phone number, but a lot of people do have my phone number. So I guess it's passed on from one to but the you know, other. It might have been on the, the we have um, we have minutes and we have guidelines and things. And I think it's not on the guidelines. It's not. No, oh, it's I not thought on it was. The guidelines. Okay. But sometimes they would call PHS to find out how they can get a garden here and, and PHS would give them my number but a lot of people have my number and they just call to find out and sometimes it works well because people pass and see something going on like trucks parking on the sidewalk or kids doing stuff they would call and let me know that such and such is happening out there so you would come out or I would contact someone else to to come out. Mel is of great help to Mm -hmm. As a male leader, you know, he would, if something is going on and Darlene is at work and I can't get out, then he's the next best thing. He would be right out here to see what is going on and help us out. Wonderful help. Yeah. And then we have Lewis as well. And Lewis, yes. both of them, see, you need a male. It's just too much for two women to try to take care of. And they're, like I said, very helpful. And at every meeting, I make sure I say, this is Lewis, this is Mel, this is Vi, this is me, that's to that. They have go to people and we're even adding on to our little family that might be Lewis coming in right now they um, just recently told me about another gardener that helps us out and it's not just us we may have about two or three other men that are very helpful out here as well because you know all this cutting grass Vi doesn't cut grass she does the business part I do cut grass and, and do things like that but the men help do that as well, and, and you do need to have their presence. We can't cut these trees and do the grass. We have a lawnmower that you can ride on. I'm still learning how to drive it, but the men do it better. So it, it helps, and it's great having them out here. Like, here's, we keep tools. Our major equipment is in that big bin right there because there was a time when people were keeping the tillers in the little houses, and people were breaking in and taking them. So major equipment was getting stolen so finally you know we tell PHS because we go to meetings down there and they got us a tank like this and it's one up the other end so garden equipment is in this one and then the other one we let gardeners put their tillers and things in because it's a problem sometimes people robbing you after you spend all your money both of us is a wooden house up there I don't know if hers was in there but mine sure was we had our we have small cultivators that we can handle and they came and took that you know and it's just sickening some major thing you need so having those big tanks but she could get in them I can't so like if somebody wanted to come out and do something today I would try I can get in the thing but I can't make it lock it's a certain way you gotta lock it and I don't want anybody or our garden tools to be in jeopardy so I don't go in it unless one of the men are out here which is why I'm saying they're helpful in being here if one of them come out oh can you open this and let me get so and so out and then I know they're here to lock it back up but do you know I know you don't live in this immediate area and by you don't live here at all but do you hear at all from neighbors about how they feel about having the garden here oh no they love it this I, I, like I say it's 38 39 years in the making everybody this is if it wasn't here they'd probably be wondering what happened you know so they're they're used to it and, and some of the people that are in the garden are from the area we have it actually from all over the city and New Jersey we have people from all over it's not just this immediate area our gardeners are from all over and like I said, there are a few that are in this immediate area. Um, New Jersey, German yeah, Town. Yeah. Where does Gail, Gail lives near Front, 5th yeah, and Front, front Street? Yeah, so somewhere there. People from everywhere. All over. Walking mm. distance, driving distance, and uh, bikers. One, what's his name? Um, the guy that's next to Rita. Uh, like you said, you know, I can't remember names. Yeah, uh -huh. he catches a train, a bus. He go all the way up to Broad Island, and then he'll catch another bus to get out to wherever it is he lives at to come down here. But he does it. And somebody had told me in the fall he wasn't going to come back because he got found something closer to him. And I happened to see him. I saw. I thought you wasn't coming. I was waiting to see to see. He's not coming. No. Who told you that? Uh -uh. No. I'm coming. I said okay, okay. You know, I said just a rumor in the air. What? Tell me about her. Yeah. Okay, I and know you that. kind of and said this. Look at her, Ruth. She's usually out here by now. Who? Um, Ruth. Ruth. Yeah, I have to see what's going on with her. 
Oh, that's just something, darling. So if, if you notice time's gone by and you haven't seen someone. We'll give them a call. Everybody has the, the end of May to show their intention. So this is the week when I'll start giving away. We have a list of people waiting to get in. I had people at the last meeting waiting to give in, but I, the rule is by the end of May, you have to serve, show your intention. Vi and Jeanette will give people calls to see what's going on and if you, and it's, I walk this garden a lot. So as I walk around, I'll see who's not here or she'll see who or Mel see who, like we're sitting here now. So I'm like, oh, Ruth is usually here. So we need to give her a buzz and see what's going on with her. And it might be that she just didn't get started yet, but we need to know because there's always somebody in line waiting. And we do have about five people waiting to give in. At the last meeting, we gave away a couple, but then I had to, we had to stop for a minute just to make sure because everybody has till the end of the month this week to show their intentions. And some people are sick, you know, if they call me up and say, I'm, I'm sick, you know, I, I want to come out in July, August or something, we'll hold a person garden and we'll actually take care of it and stuff too because in a senior's life, this is not all they have, but it is so recreational and, and good for them when it's set anybody by taking it from them. And throughout the years, we have helped people, if they call and say they're sick, you know, we just need to know what's going on. And then we won't plan it, but we try to cut it down at least. So Even that seems to me like building community. It's 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 more than the garden. You seem to care about people. Oh yeah, we we know each other. You share the stories, and you know what's going on. And like I said, it's predominantly seniors, so you know stuff is going to happen. And because they love it so, and I mean they love it. It's another lady, Miss Grant, around the corner. I've been calling her, and I haven't heard anything from her. I have to tell you about Miss Grant. Oh, okay. She had a heart attack. Yes. Oh, okay. But she's better in walking. Okay. You know. I, I okay. talked to Azim. Oh, okay. Cause I was so afraid. she's better in walking, but, but she's afraid now. She's afraid that if she do something, it might happen. But Azim is going to try to tell her, I will clean your garden. I will help you. All you have to do is slow down. Because she's about... 68, 70 years I old. I think she's older than that. Her husband so? recently died and he was a hundred and something. So she's yeah. up a little more. Um, I don't think I'm gonna, younger, yeah. I, I don't know that I'm gonna let him do that though. So we'll we'll talk about that. Yeah, I'm, but I'm then she that. wants to, she wants to do it, but she don't know how to take her time. She was a fast worker and it's still up. in her to work fast. So if you could get to, get her to slow down but that's going to be hard so right I and I again we'll talk about that I don't think that's going to happen yeah so, so, so you're saying about PHS I understand they bought the property so that was NGG. a NGG no, oh, neighborhood oh, gardens oh, trust. trust yes nice. they bought Change the property the <laughs> yeah. okay, right. they bought the property yes so but your ongoing relationship with PHS what is that well, you know, PHS was the Pennsylvania Horticultural Society, and um, that's where NGT comes out of, and, and Philadelphia Green. I don't know if you ever hear about Philadelphia Green. Philadelphia Green was there right alongside NGA. Okay, and Philadelphia Green, as Mr. Taylor never talk about NGA. He always talk about Philadelphia Green because that's what he knows. And that's who started him, helping him to get this place um, settled down. So it's Philadelphia Green was the thing back in the years gone by. And now it has a new name. Of course, we are revolving, so things change. And, but they're on the same... Group. It's different the same title. line. It's same just a different, different name, yeah. a different name. So that's what's going on with because this I think property. When I first got on one of the committees, and we're on committees down there, mm -hmm. so that's how you kind of keep in contact with everybody. Everybody knows who we are. Oh, as a matter of fact, I should have had my phone. I left my phone in the car. We were on display at the flower show. <laughs> but my phone is in the car. I could show you that. And um, we're going to be on display at different places for the whole year for them. So at 15th and Market, their latest endeavor is coming up, I think at the end of the month, and I think we're gonna be on display down there as well. Then they have a little brochure they just gave us to look at that we're in. Um, they have books that come out every month with a membership bias in there all the time, you know? So it's like, you're on display too. So people kind of know who you are and get to know you. What's, what does that feel like? Oh, it's good. I thought they made an old girl look good at it at the flower <laughs> show. I was like, ooh. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I had people cracking up. We went downtown. I said, oh, we had a professional uh, photo shoot where we went down. He's like, oh, throw it back. Do this, do that, and everything. And we were outside. He took about 100 pictures, but they only looked like they're just using one. But they took like at least 50 pictures of each of us and then some together. We went outside. We did it all over before they got this together. And throughout the years, we've been on different displays. Vi's been in several newspaper articles. I've been in a couple. Um, we were on the train. We never got to see it, though. We were supposed to, the train, I guess, has little TVs or something on them, and different things come on. So they came and did interviews out here. And we were a part of one series that was going on one year. And we were supposed to go to 30th Street and ride it up here to this stop so we could get to see it. Never happened. So yeah, we did, um, were on. When they did the... They had a program that they were doing the northeast quarter of this ab abandoned building or along the railroad track. So that's how come that bright orange paint is on that building. So they did it. I think they brought some people brought in from Germany to, to, to do it. Yeah, yes. They it. So they just made a splash on there and, and brightened up everything. That's when they did the recording about, right. yes, yeah. and then we would... It's, probably about 30 seconds or less, you know, just telling about the garden, people riding on the train. So they would identify the garden with the building and across the train track. So that was that what, that's what when Drew. panel about it, downtown, yes. I went and sat on a panel and they asked different questions. This is not the only one, there's six throughout the whole city. Mm -hmm. So they had a panel of us come down and ask you what it meant to you and I sat down with teachers, somebody, a couple people from City Hall, and, and different people. Pretty frightening for me because I'm not a speaker. I let her do the talking because I'll but talk you, some if I know you, you but know, then right um, now I'm on a panel of people. I'm like, that <laughs> orange color thing, what did it do? It illuminates, I think, at night. When you're See, out there, distance, you could, yeah. it just pops like there's some, t yeah, it, that's all. That's all, but that was a great thing, I would think, because if you're standing out there, it just pops out at you like a light from there. You see it from a distance. I don't know what their reasoning was to do it, but that's what I get from it. And it's a big mark for the train goers. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would pass. You meet people on the, see somebody on the time, I said, I saw you. I said, Where? You was in the garden. <laughs> and where were you? On the train. So. And my train men, they go by, especially the um, the freight trains. When they're going by and we're over there, they toop and wave, so we wave back, yeah. This wall also, they painted it three times. The kids, you see, there's a lot of graffiti around. They had it all orange. They said they'd give it three tries. Painted up nice, kids came back in graffiti. Paint it up again, kids come back and graffiti. Did or like the third time we started looking at it, said, so, you know, don't look half bad. I have to show you this part up here. You know, if, if they took some of this strategic effort and put it into maybe coming out here and cleaning up a garden, it would be something. But you see, up the top, it's like, how do they even get up there to do it? But actually, when they did it over, after they painted it the second time, they wrote, you could see the word potato and beets. They wrote it on the garden, so they know that it's a connection, whoever the artist is. It's a connection, so they put the word beads, and you could see the potato playing up there. How, I don't know, I don't, and I don't know what some of those initials are, but that's their trademark. And how they get up there, I could never explain it, but they do. And even when? Because they have to go across the train tracks, and this don't just get up there easily. <coughs> Because some of it, which I don't think it is, looks stenciled out, but it's not. It's spray painting them here and doing it. So it takes time to do that, but nobody across the street nor us see them doing it. You just come back and it's Next all there. And it's there. Mm -hmm. So you go figure. Amazing. Even our caboose, oh, we, yeah, we painted caboose? that. Caboose is many stories. Eileen, who's from PHS, knows the real one. But back in the day when I first got in the garden, they told me that this was the caboose that John Kennedy was on when he came from Texas to West Coast. So I said, okay, and I bought that story for a couple years. And somebody said, why didn't it the Smithsonian? And I said, you know, I should have asked him that. That's true. <laughs> why isn't it down there? <laughs> so this was the story I was fed. The, the official story, I think, is someone had a caboose in one of their yards and they needed some place to put it. So I guess some councilman in this area made an ask, could it be parked there? And there he sits, because he's about 
30 with somebody. With to have Mr. It. Taylor said, he, I forgot his name. And he said, if you let me put that caboose there, I'll do something for you. So he paid for the fencing. And we keep the caboose. But the caboose is a historical uh, piece of Glenwood Green Acres. It's not going anywhere. Now, they, when they're going to revitalize or redesign this, they're going to fix it up and we're going to have a monumental piece in here from that caboose. Because about almost the whole time the garden's been here. I, um, yeah, the whole, I think at least. 30 something years because that I've been I coming around has been here. Up, and it was here. Yeah, the fence so. had been here for yeah. years. Yeah. That part, years, I've never heard that part of the story, him paying for the fence. I didn't know yeah, about yes, that. Yes, he, he paid. The deal was if he would let them put it there, he would, he paid for this fencing for it to come around. We could check with Eileen to be sure, but See, that's Eileen a lot. wasn't even out here back in the day when they first started. It was Elaine and somebody else. Eileen came in the later years after Terry. Terry was out here first, then they brought Eileen in after a little while. Yeah. So I'll have to find out who her stories mm -hmm. come from. Do for that. There's a lot of different wise men's tales and different things, because I told you what they told me. The Kennedy was on it. I said, like, really? I remember seeing that caboose. We all stood at, it was an A&P market over here, and we all stood there and watched that train come by. And I'm like, dang, they took it to Washington and brought it back. <laughs> and later years, and I'm telling people what they told me. They're like, well, tell me something. Why isn't it in the Smithsonian? <laughs> think of it at the time because if Kennedy was in that caboose it would not have been there. No, they took me. it down and brought it back <laughs> because they had nothing to do with it. I <laughs> know. But no. when I asked years ago what was the and I don't even know if my grandfather who told him I think it was him and Mr. Taylor. Some of the old guys would stay out here because I told you they would stay from sun up to sundown and I just listened to the different stories that were going around. But somewhere through one of the conversations that was the one and that's kind of what stuck in my head though when you think about it. Really? You know <laughs> Mrs. Clinton was in the White House when Bill was um, president. I think she was surfing the night one day and came up on this garden and wrote Mr. Taylor a letter. So Mr. Taylor wouldn't let you go near that letter. <laughs> we wanted to get a copy of it. He wouldn't let it out of his sight. And poor Mr. Taylor is gone and so is the letter. Yeah, but Mrs. Clinton wrote him. I said that she wrote him a letter, a handwritten letter to Mr. Taylor about this beautiful garden that she saw out there in the internet. So this been around. We've been very um we're historical. Yep. It is I mean it really is part of your identity, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yes. In the summertime now I wouldn't know what else to do, you know, recreation wise. This is the recreation. And when we were working, that was the good part. I think we were out here more <laughs> when we worked because we would come and stay half the evening. We were working, we get off at four o'clock. I would go home, make dinner. I wouldn't eat, I'd make my dinner and then drive all the way. And one time I didn't have a car, so. Darlene would, um, oh, Darlene would come home and she had a little red car. And she called, are you ready? Yes. And she'd come and get me. And we come out here at 9 o'clock, 9.30 in the evening, or at night then, Betty. That is when we were going home with bags. We had lights, too, out here more so. Yeah. The train track was lit up. After a little while, the people across the street started saying the light was shining in the window. So we could see, because I'd go home, my friend, what, what are y'all doing out there all this time? What? But we do a little work and a lot of talk. That was it, mainly. But I remember one evening we were going out. I had two bags, she has two bags, and Jeanette has two bags. And there was a man across the street, and he said, you know, all you night gardeners get more, <laughs> get more food than we get as day gardeners. <laughs> but we did work. We worked. So we tell, go worked. back again to how you met. You were both working at a hospital? Yeah, the hospital of the University of Pennsylvania. I still work there now till death do us part. <laughs> I'll be there. And uh, Vi trained me. When I first came, she was the one that trained me into the system. So you're still and working? The, oh, yeah. Full I think time? I'm 39 years, yeah. Like I said, till death do us part. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there. No need in trying to find a job now. So. now I'm at retirement's footsteps, but every time I get almost there, they push me back one because we have something that you have 960 
hours of um, sick time, I think it is, or something. If you don't use it, you can get paid for it. So now they say when you're almost stepping into retirement, oh, well, maybe you can't get that till 65 now, you know. But I don't want, that's the talk on the floor now. When are you going to retire? When are you going to retire? Well, I have to think of what I'm going to be when I grow up first. And then I don't, I don't want to come out of work and not do nothing. This is only seasonal, so this isn't something to do all the time. And um, everybody now, I guess because everybody has been there, that's the talk of the season. I have to tell them sometimes, shut it down. I'm going to hear it right this minute. Yeah, I'll think we, about it when it comes. We, we met about the garden. It was, I've been going to the flower show since 1972. From They were at the Civic Center. So that's when they were at the Civic Center that I went over one day at lunchtime and walking around and this table was there with different cards and I pick up this postcard. Beautiful. And I was so excited I came back and on my way back to my job I stopped with her and I said, look at what I found, look at this beautiful garden. And she just casually looked at it and said, oh, that's our garden. I said, where? And she started to tell me about this garden and we start talking and she said, well, why don't you come on out and talk to Mr. Taylor? He loves to talk to people that know about planting and growing and then he probably would give you a plot and I said okay so I came out met with Mr. Taylor and we talked and he said okay you know enough so he gave me a plot and I'm here from then on. What year do you know what year that was by? That year was 92 91 or 92 90, 91 92 we um I was there Yes, we came out and have this garden, and I started it. And that's when we were night gardeners because we were working. And um, that we'd come out, I'd be out here by 6 o'clock, and we would stay until probably 9 o'clock or 9.30. Yes, but we had lights, and so Mr. Taylor and another gardener that was here named Henry, if they are here, they wouldn't leave us as girls in the garden. They would wait and until we are ready to go. And Mr. Taylor would get tired of waiting, but he goes home <laughs> and sit out. in that window and look watch out. us until we leave there. And funny story, he had a little dog and a little cat. A little cat name was Tiger. And I was here one evening, Mr. Taylor called, keep calling me, why come on, why come on? And I said, okay, but he left and the cat stayed with me. And about 8.30, he got up and he started whining. And I said, okay, I'll be, I'm almost done. And he lay back down. It was a girl cat. She lay down. And um, she got up again and she started whining. I said, I'll be right there. And she stayed a while. And then she started whining again, like, if you don't come on, I'm leaving. So I packed my things and we both walked out to the gate. The cat went out with me, he He'll shoots right across the street and go to his house and I got in my car and went home. Mm -hmm. That was the funniest story, but that cat would not leave me in the garden by myself. Waited for me. Yep, just like yeah. Mr. Taylor taught him. <laughs> the garden cat, I tell people it was the attack cat because like I said, they would hang around. It's funny, when you come out, she come right off the fence with you, we go to the car, she go right up the steps to his house and start like knocking on the door, come and let me, I'm home. <laughs> it was just funny. He had a dog too, Blackie, that would follow him around. And funny as it goes, the dog died first and then a couple years later, maybe, and maybe not even a couple, Mr. Taylor died, and then I just stopped seeing the cat. He took his pets right with there because he loved those two animals. Mm -hmm. And he'd bring the dog over. That was the only dog allowed. But the dog would just lay there and wouldn't mess with anything. Cat would just follow you around. I'm sure through the years the cat got to know us because, like she said, they wait around. And it just be funny how she looked both ways before crossing the street and go right home when it was finished and wouldn't let another cat dare come in here. And... Sometimes I don't even know how they were getting in, but that cat would chase any other cat out of here. This was my garden, and you're not coming in. No, that cat was trained. Yes, he he, he was a quiet, protective little animal, lovable. And I'm I don't hate animals, but I'm not an animal person. Fine if you have them, but I can't keep them. But that little cat, she stayed in the garden. She watches over us. Until we're ready to go, she goes. The dog would follow Mr. Taylor home. As soon as Mr. Taylor get up, 
the dog get up and he's gone, but the cat would stay. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't leave us. And one day he forgot somehow and left the dog in here. And we came, the dog kept running to the fence and running back there and running to the fence. And then we had to come in here. We thought Mr. Tiller was down in here somewhere because he don't never leave the dog. I don't know how he did. But it's like the dog was telling us, come back here. So he lured us to come back here because he kept coming back to you and running that way to come back. All right, you want us to follow. And Mr. Taylor wasn't down, and I'm like, oh my God, what the heck happened? But somehow, some way, that one day, he left him. And I don't know how he left the dog, he I never does. The dog probably fell asleep, and Mr. Taylor walked away, and yeah, he couldn't find Mr. Taylor, but that was it. And Mr. Taylor got sick here in this garden. He would get up in the morning. By 6 o'clock, he is in this garden. At 6, 5.30, he is in here. He takes a break about 10. And he stayed home until about 12, he comes back. He go home for lunch, and then he comes back. But by six o'clock, he's gone home. He's, he would be gone. He's tired, I think, yes. at that point. And he would cut all this grass here, majority of it by himself. He wouldn't let the other men help him. Like now we have lots of help. Like this lawnmower that we have that you drive on, I just say all the time, he would have loved it. We try to get a lawnmower. He don't want no lawnmower. With a weed whacker, he would do this, and we have a big hill, which I'll show you. He used to do it all by himself. He didn't want a lawnmower. He didn't want to push the lawnmower. He just liked that weed whacker, and he would walk around, and that's why he's up so early. Before the sun comes out, it starts getting hot. He'd cut half, then he'd come up this end. And rarely would he let the other men help him. It no, just was like his job. There was something for him to do. They didn't do it the way he wanted. Yeah, he, he was it. a perfectionist. And if you're not cutting it the way he cuts it, he's going to say something. So he wouldn't let them do it. Nope, do it by myself. Um, did P <clears throat> PHS ever honor Mr. Taylor in any way? Oh, yeah, yeah, throughout the years on different occasions. We actually do, too. When you first come in the garden, we have a garden at Mr. Taylor's garden. It's just like I said, we're not manicured yet. When you come back again, it'll be together. We have a sitting garden in his memory as well with a stone in it. I mean, it's not cleaned up, but I'll show you. <laughs> when you come back again, it'll be straight in the next couple of weeks. But, um, yeah, like I said, he's just proud of everything. He would go down to all the different things. That's how I started going down to PHS. He wanted to be in this garden. Then he started sending me to meetings. So... That's how I started going downtown because he just don't want to sit in a meeting. You know, most of the men here don't. We try to get them to come. to come uh, if we want to, but me and Vi are the meeting people. You know, they want to be in here and they'll go and come back and tell us what's going on, but they don't want to come down. And, and he didn't Blaine. after a little while. Blaine was mm -hmm. one of the um, NGT people. And when he was retiring... He was um, um, uh, vice president of yeah. the Hortus Cultural Society. Yeah. And when he was retiring, he spoke about all the people that helped him. Because when he started, you know, you know theory, but actual doing stuff, it's different. So he came out and was trying to show them how to do things. And um, he said, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor was one of those men that really taught him how to plant and how things grow. So they, they learned from Mr. Taylor a lot. That's Blaine Bonham? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, he, um, Blaine, yeah. Came out here before I really knew who he was. Me and Mr. Taylor sitting at the table having watermelon. He sat down with us because he wasn't in a suit and stuff. I think he had a pair of jeans and stuff. And him and Spike came down and we three or four sat at the table and ate watermelon and everything. And it wasn't until later years when I started going to the meeting. I'm like, oh my God, he was the vice president sitting there. Well, I guess we could have been a little better. Yeah. <laughs> and we have a new uh, vice president now that's really nice too. And we work at the flower show every year. Mm -hmm. And I had one of my friends and I said, well, let's take a picture with him. No, let him take our picture. He can take our picture. <laughs> If I had my phone, Matt, I was like, right? yeah. yeah, he's the vice president or something. She said, but he can take our picture. He got two hands and everything. Yeah. So we got him. He's no, I'll take the picture. We take it. And I'm going to tell her, Linda, that's Matt. We're going to take a picture with him, not make him take the pictures. But she's like, she know he was. Oh, no, he can take our picture. Mr. Can you take our picture? Yeah. He said, yeah. He's really good. Blaine, uh, Matt, Matt, Matt Radar. Yeah, now. he is good. He is, he is really good. I said, um, those people are really good. Their interest in securing... Um, I wouldn't say wasteland, but um, preserving, spaces. preserving green spaces, they are excellent. They, they, um, Neighborhood Gardens Trust, they are great. That's what they do. They, they're linked up with the um, bank, land trust, and they, 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 um, 
Bland Bank and all this stuff. Jenny Greenberg, she is the director of the NGT program. They're doing a wonderful job of securing land for beautification of this Philadelphia city. They're wonderful, really good, very good with that. Yes, and we thank them for Greenwood Green Acres because we are enjoying it. The new Re generation, because like you said, you knew Blaine was in when I first started, then it was Jane Pepper. And I think in between Jane Pepper, we just had one guy that just left. Who was the other guy before Matt? Drew Becker. Drew. Becker. Drew. Yeah. yeah. I forget him. <laughs> Drew I want to show you the other end as well. Those people take a walk up to do the um to do the. Oh yeah, the that was one of his that projects for the. The person came. There's some artists from Germany. I can't remember all the names and stuff. There were some females that um well they I don't know who they do. Because we didn't see when they do it. Oh, we you mean Play Chess was involved no, remember in that? Remember who was out here? Remember they had this high thing going up? I didn't. I wasn't out here when they did it. When I come back, it was done. Yes. Mm. So Chess so was responsible for that. Yes. Oh. Yeah. They brought in the artists, like I said, from Germany. But this this is one of six. It's, they tell me on the highway when you go up 95, it's like a yellow, a purple, green. It's about four or five different colors throughout the city. Huh. We were just the orange wall. And they had the different walls. Phone. Mine's is in the car. I hit it. Maybe I'll throw it away. Oh, it's mine. Let me just. Mine's is the old vintage phone, so I can hear it. <laughs> I don't want it to. I am looking for mine because mine had that same ring. This mill right here. Yeah, this is Ida. Well, they look like they all do together. Yeah, I think that's Ida. But they were taking beans over there. I need to get some spring beans over there. Oh, yes. I didn't put my spring beans down yet. You didn't, can you? No, I, I didn't. Hey, doing, Hello, Hello Mr. Hill, how are you? Good, but oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> right. Did you get ready to cut down uh, tree? Trimming? Hey, cut the dead limbs out of my uh, peach tree? No. Fig, but my fig tree. Oh, half, oh. Of it, half of it died. I don't know what happened. You know, fig and peach are. You have to take care of them. Once the, the branches start ripening and died, if you don't cut them off, they eventually, the whole tree is going to go. So when you see the branches start dying, just cut it, snip it right down, as close as you can get to the trunk of the tree. I have so. no problem with my peach trees. Only my, uh, the fig. The fig. It can't stand the extreme cold. And I think that's what happened, because you know the one we have up here, too. Mm -hmm. He didn't do good over yeah, the last year it didn't do that because we didn't get that uh, bitter cold, you know, mm -hmm. last year. And I can see the one right here. You see it straight through? Cause oh, yeah, see stem. that? Yeah, he, they just didn't do that. That big one over there that, that Tom used to have. Yeah, he got two. One in the yeah. and one in the court. Not this year. Because they should have leaves by now, shouldn't they? I got a few shoots coming up. Have leaves. Those are the ones going to leave in there and we're going to tie them up together, try to make one bush out of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> He's something. one of our gardeners, Ms. Um, Gilbert Hill. How you doing? This Hi. is Barbara. How are you doing? We're doing Not a little history thing. in this garden here. Okay. From the beginning. Good, yeah. good, good, yeah. good, good, good. And touring, so we might be back to see you in a minute. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Another peach tree coming, and here's another peach tree. Peach trees, I told her, were all over the place. Yeah, we you eat the peach, throw the seed away, and, and there it goes. It grows easily. So we had, and this is our great caboose. We kind of thought that they would come over at some point and write on our caboose, and we were supposed to leave them a note to say, please, when you tag. Please tag Glenwood Green Acres. But they came before we put up the note. <laughs> and I don't, I have no idea what this is. I can't figure it out. But you know what, we were going to paint over it again, but it, it turns out it don't look so bad. So you know when you get tired of trying to keep up with it. That's his signature. But up the top. This looks like a G O A. Mm -hmm. I think that's his I would signature. like for it to say Glenwood across the yes. Glenwood Green Acres off that top piece where they can't reach. So at least the people on the train could know the name of the garden. I would just hope maybe this that and, and something like can have our name on it. One person because here is another one. 
these big wheels one year it was a squirrel he got in somebody's garden i have a picture of and got a sweet potato dug it up and he was laying on this thing right here just eating that sweet potato up and he was so busy into he didn't see me coming up trying to take his picture we have uh resident groundhogs i'm surprised none of them haven't come out to meet us as yet that are all over the place a family because this one he was sitting here, I was Mel's like, he's not gonna come up here. And he had the door open. He came right from Mel's thing and I had to tell him, you said he wasn't gonna come. He walked right from behind your thing. He looked like a baby bear. I sit at the table, I'm like, oh my God, he is a big thing. Eating very well out here. And, oh, excuse me, they hang out. We have a little bathroom situation here too. Through the years, they broke the window out, but yeah, it's pretty nice. We'll cut all the grass around. Like I said, when we're able to come. I don't know if you heard about that. Mm -hmm. Remember, everything's been sitting all winter. We're going to let you see, but it might not be cleaned out, but we'll get it done for the season. Oh, that's really yeah. nice. And we usually will sweep it out and bleach them up and yeah, get yeah. them ready for the season. Well, how nice for the gardeners who stay yeah, along composting. Time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody broke the window. Yeah. That comes through NGT, too. Oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. Terry, when Terry Bustovic was here, she, she got it in for us. And Darlene, the Chocho grows. Look, look, see. This is what she grows every year. Yeah, see. Pictures in the car. It's coming. I thought that was it. Oh, that's what you just put down. Yeah. This is the one that is um. Oh, come on. And she's gonna go this way and go all over. I have a picture on my phone. I could show you. You just put down one. So I have three. One there. Oh, here one is. here. And there is one down there. There she is. Yep. So right it'll there. just grow around this trellis? Yes. Oh, it takes over the whole thing when she shows the pictures, the whole thing. Yeah. And like I said, when we have time, you'll clean up out here. This is like a job because it's everywhere you turn is something else to do. Like this whole area, so the plants will grow. We need to come, but sometime if two of us get together, you take one and you get one and we meet in the middle, we can knock it out in no time. That's like I was telling you about the City Harvest Garden. A bunch of us got together, knocked it right out, and it kind of works sometimes better that way. But all of these weeds have to come out of here. I you know, like to have the weed whacker out and we go in between the trees around the commode and it's just so much work. I'm going to get the sound here. <laughs> the, um, you cannot pass a weed. You have to pull it. You Once you start working, even if you're passing, so, oh, here's a bean. I had lima beans last year on the side of the fence, but they didn't do that well, and a few of them, so I didn't pick it. Look, she dropped the seed, and there it is coming. You have to be able to know them, like I said, from an embryo. I can tell a vegetable from an embryo. Not that good on flowers, but if you know them, you'll look right down and see what's a weed and what's not a weed, like this is grass. We put down, believe it or not, this is, um, we this had is some kind of grass that was in, a, in the outside of Mr. Taylor's garden up there, so it grows real high. You can't see behind it, so we cut it back. And it's like hay when it goes down. It keeps down a lot of the weeds. But this, this dry one that you're looking here is from the chocho. That's from the chocho. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just cut it and put it back down there. When you do that, whether you use the, um, the bale, the hay bale or cuttings from your garden, and you plant, it helps to keep the plant cool. The root, and even when it's too, the sun is hot, it doesn't dry out as fast. So you put all this back into the soil. And most of the time it breaks down because this is all vegetar vegetarian stuff. So it breaks down back into soil and make your garden soil richer. That's what we do with that. Oh, there's another bean. There's another one. Oh, and there's another one right there. Look, one, two. See, there is beans. So we'll have chocho and beans on this trellis this year. <laughs> I didn't mean to make all that noise. <laughs> oh. oh, I tell you, you two are so much fun to interview. <laughs> We've got great stuff in here. Oh, you have to tell us, I don't know what exactly your project is. So oh, well, huh? so I, I um, PHS, 
what I do is interview people, mm -hmm. and PHS found me because I love meeting people and then turning their oh, we've got a lot of people. Hello. 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 This is another ancient gardener, Mr. Tillery. <laughs> he and um, what's your name? Pearl and Pearl. So they came to work, and you see they're not working. They're sitting down already, goofing <laughs> off on the job. <laughs> He are, I work he, hard yesterday, yeah, I, I work hard Monday, I was here Monday, Tuesday. Tuesday. She's supposed to be so helping she her husband, <laughs> she's helping yeah, her husband, you see how she helps? The, we the whole she's sitting the down. Dollar. I did a lot yesterday. yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> sitting down on the job, I tell you, hard to get good help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the tiller, so he did. I don't even see him. He's sitting down. I don't. Oh, I see him now. Okay, he's talking. So, farmers then, just the gardeners then, and people are just starting to turn over now. I'm gonna have to get Brian to turn mines over again. He's um. This is everything he pulled up out of the garden, like a pile, and they'll wait for it to break down and throw so, it back in. So, Darlene, say more about the two ends. Uh, <laughs> it's just a, a, one of the gardeners termed it. <laughs> Farmers up that end, gardeners down this end, because they have more time. I, I think these are the workers down here and the retirees maybe up there. That, that's how I take it. And I don't know why he calls us that, but it's a guy, Azim, out here that he, he termed it for me. And that's what he always says. He so, says and, that the yeah. farmers do better work than, than the, the gardeners garden. because they're actually farming. They keep, but believe me. Next month when you come out here, it, it looks, <laughs> it is beautiful up there. Their crops are neat and in order and it's clean. And you have a few nice clean ones down here, but nah, they got it. They got it. And that's because they have Mel up there. See, Mel is a captain on that end and he does not allow slackers. No, up he here, not. we're, we're kind of in charge down here. Lewis works as well. Lewis works at nighttime, so he comes out in the morning and he this may is, leave. Um, so we let the... Slackers down here, I'm not on them as much as Mel. You know Jerusalem artichoke? Yes. Yeah, here it is. All over. It is very invasive. Don't put a pl the plant in your yard if you don't want it everywhere because the root goes under and it comes up anywhere. And this is called comfy. It's some kind of herbal thing. It's very pretty, but it, you could use it for tea. You could you make tea out of it. So is that thing, but I don't know how to use it, the Jerusalem artichoke. Mm. And this is um, Gail's garden. This is the one that I tell you is a Korean. She's Korean. Right. They, uh, do a lot of lettuce. I'm surprised they let it be up here free because we have rabbits too. And when it comes up, the rabbits and the groundhogs are going to have a real day for her. We're coming up. Mm -hmm. But their garden is also very clean. She sits on a little stool and actually pick those weeds out. She can go between those lettuce and pick the weeds out and don't pull one lettuce. Uh, she, they're an artist when it comes to that type of work. Did a great job, great job. And also that sifting thing, like if we had the time or the energy to do it, to sit down and, and they made up a contraption where they actually sifted out the whole gardens of all the dirt. Took them a month, planted it, stuff popped right up. And they're constantly sitting down and weeding and stuff. It's hard for us to sit down and constantly do weeding when you have to oversee the whole thing. So I have to look at what everybody else is doing. And pretty soon I'll be on, we'll be in full force by the end of the month. Everybody has been the end of May to do what you want to do. After May 31st, owls have to be cut. Everything has to get clean because we're actually in a competition. Every year they have a city harvest competition. Oh, did you Not sign a city up harvest. Yet? Yeah. And they come out and judge and they look at the overall appearance of the place. These are our fruit trees. We have a apple, apple pear. Apple. I think it's some peach trees back there. A couple peach, a couple pears, two or two. The apple tree was beautiful. They came and, and uh, cut the trees back one year. He didn't do too much last year. I, I kind of feel like maybe they shouldn't have trimmed the tree because for years with no trimming, full of apples. Last year it didn't do too much and I can't seem to see anything on there now. I'm hoping they didn't throw him in so much shock that it just won't do it again. And so when you say somebody came out, somebody from the PHS? Across, yeah, oh, they sent someone down to trim the trees and things. Mm -hmm. 
oh yeah, we have another Lady Ida that will help harvest it. And then they give out food every other Friday. And if their food comes in. So maybe mid-July we might be able to give them something. Mm -hmm. So we have little buckets like that. Orange bucket. Try to fill them up and give them. This year, I said go with more string beans. Because that's a vegetable that they like. We try to get something that they really like. Even though we have a variety of plants. Some things they use more than others. Or... They'll use them all, take them all, but people say, oh, no, I don't want that. I'd rather have this. So I'm trying to give them what they told me. People always ask them for string beans. So I said, well, let's do, we have 10 rows of string beans, which will yield a lot. Uh, tomatoes is a favorite. Now that squash and zucchini is becoming more popular, I'm hoping this year they'll take more of those. But they did ask me about okra, and that's one thing we didn't put in here. You know what they asked me about okra for that? Not, we didn't put that in here. We have to somewhere find a, make a row of okra for them. And who ends up eating this food? They give it out. They give out food every Friday. Uh, Non-perishable things and they'll have the vegetables. So the people who are running the program, they have bags. So they'll bag it up and we give it to the people. And when I go up there, there's like a line of people waiting to get stuff. So Where do you go? Just at do Broad and Dolphin, right across the street from the Uptown, is their office. And they give it out at their office. I don't know if she told me every third... Friday or second Friday but I think now that it's summertime they're going to start every other I just have to find the starting date we're not ready for them and, and they're giving it out whether we have our stuff there or not but this would just be an add-on to what they're already giving out it's very nice mm -hmm. we have one of our newer gardeners too she's last year and this will be her second year over there Miss Betty and her stuff is coming up pretty good I see as well so like I said everybody hasn't come out yet Mm -hmm. But they know the end of the month. In the next two weeks, I expect to see a lot of people because right. they know at the end of May, I'm turning them over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's why I think Brian is going around getting his friends. And, and the new gardeners are waiting. I just wouldn't give it until the end of the month so I can see what per people's intentions are, if they're yeah. really going to come or not. And as you see, it's a lot of work because we don't clean. When you get your garden, it's in whatever state it is. You have to get in there and do the work. I don't know what else to tell you about Glenwood unless you have another I think question. What I'm going to do is just, uh, this helps me with the editing. So what I'm going to do, just so you know, Dora, I'm going to, this whole thing, everything you've said, is going to end up being transcribed mm -hmm. as part of the history of the garden for PHS. So that's, mm -hmm. main, that's the main purpose. But what I do is I look for fun, good stories, and yeah. you've given me a ton of them. Mm -hmm. And then I produce it as a little thing that it will go online and you can listen to it. Oh, okay. So you'll hear you two <laughs> and laughing in the back and right, forth. Right, right, well, it's the laugh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah.